All right. So we are diving in deep on the Baltimore real estate market for 2020. Um, what happened in Baltimore in uh, in December, and then really going to take some time to talk about looking forward. And there's been this huge analysis on what that looks like. So as you guys join in, let me know where you're joining from. I'm going to get Instagram together because this does not seem to want to work right now. Let me get that up and running. Um, so here's the thing. Everyone wants to talk about Baltimore. Everyone wants to have kind of opinions on what's happening. Um, we really out here in these streets, close literally upstairs um, in a, on a meeting with um, with the Baltimore City Housing Department. Um, so we out here. And so I want to take some of the things that we share, right, and talk about as far as the deals that we do, the opportunities that we see. Um, and and share some of this stuff with you guys. So typically, hey, how you guys doing? All right, we see South Carolina, Rosedale, Bowie, Newark, Baltimore. What's up, guys? So we're on Instagram and YouTube. So if I'm looking everywhere, it's because I'm in all the places. Um, so um, we, every single month, go through specific market data um, for Baltimore with NextGen. And so I would like to go through some of that data with you guys to share What's happening? What's really good um, in Baltimore for 2020? Like looking at 2020 in review, and make sure y'all got some numbers, right? So we don't we don't just talk about it. We out here being about it. So you guys already know if you're part of Next Gen hashtag Next Gen Takeover, you already know what's up, guys. Um, and so although we do this every month with Next Gen, I wanted to do it with everyone because y'all have to know what's going on because you will not. You shall not. It will not happen. <laughs> You're not going to say we ain't tell you. Okay. You will not say we didn't tell you. Um, some of you guys may have joined our free class on why Baltimore, why now? If you did, throw one in the chat so I can see who's already tapped in with that conversation. Um, there's a lot of ways. Next Gen Takeover, what up? Um, there's a lot of ways to tap in, right? And so for us, we're always looking to make sure um, that as Baltimore develops and as Baltimore continues to, to change, we have a say on what that looks like, right? So we got DC, we got all these places that have changed and developed, and we didn't have these kinds of conversations. Okay, next gen take on IG. I see y'all. And so, um, and if you need, if you haven't taken the class, um, the link is in our bio. You can check that out to a free class. We drop all the gems um, and really want to make sure that whether you work with us directly through NextGen, which is where we're taking folks and really diving in and supporting people through the process, making sure that they know and understand how to not just buy real estate in Baltimore, but find success in real estate in Baltimore, there is a difference, <laughs> okay? And so with us, we're like, we're, we've been here, done that for years. How about we take our knowledge, our resources, our team, our access, and share that with our family, with our next gen fam? Um, and so that's what we do. But beyond that, right, there's a lot of things. There's people that might want to just move to Baltimore and buy their own house and don't want to buy a block or build a portfolio. There are still things that you should know and understand about investing in Baltimore. And so we like to share a lot of information on our YouTube and Instagram to help make sure people know how to do that. Got it? All right. Y'all ready? Let's see. We got Philly. We got a bunch of Baltimore, New York. I saw Japan, San Diego, New Orleans. Um, uh, uh, okay, cool. Uh, someone said it's next gen free. No, it is not. <laughs> um, because it takes a lot of time and a we got a whole staff. Um, to support those folks. Um, all right, so let's dive in. So we have a specific data um, on um, on neighborhoods in Baltimore. We're going to talk about what happened in Baltimore in 2020, starting with some data for um, for uh, talking about December as well. So here's what you have to know, and this is why we're like the time is now, right? So everybody always wants to double dutch around Baltimore. The reasons why we're saying the time is now is because 2020, and I quote, 2020 was the best year for housing this decade. 
year for housing this decade. More homes were selling faster and at higher prices. Why is that? More homes were selling faster and at higher prices. Why is that? Well, in that free class, for those of you guys who joined that, you know part of that is because of government spending, right? You know that it's because of incentives. You know that it's because of a lot of things that Baltimore has done to position the city for folks at this point who are like, I ain't fitting to pay all this rent in DC. I'm not fitting to pay all this rent in New York. I'm not fitting to pay all this um, in California where I can live somewhere else and get three times the house for a quarter of the price, right? And so we saw this, this shift, especially during COVID, where real estate stayed essential in Baltimore. And so um, with that, there was, a, there was still movement in the housing markets where some of our neighboring states like Pennsylvania shut down, right? And so uh, we had that situation where people were still looking to move into Baltimore, regardless of what was happening um, in other places, because the property values were lower, because there were all these incentives, um, because of our location. Um, so those of you who are on YouTube, I need you to hit the like button or the thumbs up. You know, I'm not on here all the time, but I know that's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> when y'all are connecting with what we're talking about, throw some hearts in the chat on, on Instagram. So 2020 was the hottest, was the best year for housing this decade. More homes selling faster with higher prices. Again, let's think about it. Economics, y'all know I got an economics degree. So let's break it all the way down. Supply and demand. Okay. Supply and demand. Inventory was low. The availability of houses that people were looking for was relatively low. And then you still had all these people looking to buy into Baltimore, right? Supply low, demand high. You had houses selling faster and at higher prices. Got it? All right. So it says, with regard to sales volume, um, best December since 2010, more volume than, than double that of 2010 and 11. That means twice as many houses sold in December 2020 than December of 2010 and De December of 2011. This was the first time in 10 years that December, um, that, that there were more than 900 sales in December. So there were more than 900 houses sold in December of 2020. We have not seen that in the last 10 years, okay? Again, I'm going to need y'all to quit playing on YouTube because I was just focused on Instagram because they throwing all the, all the uh, hearts and everything. I know y'all supposed to be hitting the thumb button or whatever it is, the thumbs up, whatever y'all supposed to be doing. Go ahead and do that. All right. So now let's talk about the pricing, right? Because again, Baltimore City, um, although prices went up, it's still relatively low compared to neighboring cities, right? So you think about Philly, you think about DC, Baltimore tends to be in the middle. And so, um, but when we talk about housing prices increase, like it still doesn't, it still doesn't match with what's going on around us, right? We're talking about within Baltimore, within Baltimore, the housing um, prices went up a little bit. So the average price of, of homes sold in December of 2020, which was the highest mark in the last 10 years, right? Was $211,000, all right? So the average price was 2011. So remember, we're gonna do another look. Economics degree. We're going to make sure we speak in English, okay? Average means all the houses sold divided by the number of houses sold, right? 2011, $211,000. The median price was 185. So if you took all 900 houses and you broke them down to 450 on this side, 450 on that side, 185,000 would be in the middle, okay? So, um, and the average price of houses in December of 2020 was 29% higher, 29% higher than December of 2019, 29% higher. Um, all right, cool. Um, for those realtors out here, um, y'all trying to figure out Baltimore, first of all, just because Baltimore's hot, don't think this is a um, waving the flag to say, come over here and try to... Um, Try to bring all your buyers and stuff because I want you to get people jacked up. You still got to understand the neighborhood. Still got to understand how we how we get down in Baltimore <laughs> because sometimes if you don't understand the nuances, right, um, you can you can jack people up. However, I am going to share this for my realtors. 
Um, at home sold an average of 41 days. So that's 41 days on the market. Your house on the market on November 1st, you sold it, you were, you know, you closed on the property by mid-December. Okay. Um, that is 16 days faster than 2019. It's wild. 16 days faster. Houses are selling for two weeks faster than they did in 2019. Uh, would you happen to know the average rehab cost? So that's not going to be data here. I'll tell you what our average rehab cost is. And if you follow us on Instagram, you see our before and afters and our um, stories where we're sharing, you know, what's happening on our on our projects. Our average renovation budget is usually between one hundred and forty to one hundred and sixty thousand dollars. We are rebuilding homes, um, but doing it historically. We, we use historic tax credits quite often. Um, so our average rehab cost is high. So anyone that's talking to you about Baltimore and says you can expect to spend X, they are telling you lies and fallacies, <laughs> lies and fallacies. Why? Because the housing stock in Baltimore is a very diverse and not only diverse in the sizes, um, but also diverse in the in the um, in the condition of the homes. Not every house is a bando. Not every house is a front wall with a tree growing up the middle. Um, and then you have a lot of size differences. You have row homes, you have two-story row homes, you have three-story row homes, you have four-story row homes, you have single-family detached houses, you have multifamily, you have everything in between. So there's a lot of diversity in the market, which is why um, there is no one-size-fits-all um, for those kinds of questions. I just brought uh, in Baltimore myself, but across almost across the USA, you can say the housing market went up due to supply and demand due to COVID and people not listing. So I wouldn't say it was... Mm, so. Actually, I think you saw more people like trying to list sometimes. Um, but yes, yeah, so you have you definitely have the supply and demand for sure. Um, but some markets actually saw a decrease in their market because it's so expensive. There weren't a lot of people looking to move into expensive markets compared to Baltimore, where a lot of people were looking to move into an area that not only had lower property values, but also a lot of incentives to draw people in to so keep more money in your pocket to buy houses. Um uh, all right. So, uh, let's keep going. So 246 neighborhoods, um, had multiple listed sales. So 246 neighborhoods had sales in Baltimore. Um, let's see what other stuff we want to go into. Uh, Baltimore city's gain in median price beat the entire metro region by 10%. Um, uh, we also saw, um, a 14% increase um, and the gain in, in pending new sales. So the pending, more offers are being made. All right. Um, yes, Baltimore, the city of blocks. Absolutely. Exactly. B DC decreased. Exactly. So other markets were decreasing in their housing market compared to Baltimore and some other markets that also, that Baltimore is not the only market that, that had, um, saw good days during COVID. Um, but I would challenge to say there's probably not many who saw as strong of a market than Baltimore did. Um, I am specifically talking about Baltimore City right now, specifically talking about Baltimore City. Um, all right. So what makes up the, the top 25 most selling areas in Baltimore? Y'all always want to ask about neighborhoods. And, you know, I always say, you know, I'm, or y'all try to ask about zip codes and then I get an attitude. But this is specific neighborhoods. All right, so um, the neighborhood with the highest average sale, sales price, um, those of you uh, of and from Baltimore and understand Baltimore know, um, wouldn't be surprised by the fact that that's Roland Park um, with the average sales price of $741,000, followed by Guilford, $609,000, and the Inner Harbor with an average sales price of $553,000, right? Oh, y'all thought all of Baltimore had $5,000 houses? Oh, really? <laughs> These neighborhoods selling for, you know, half a million, quarter of a million dollars? Absolutely. Again, a, a diversity in the market in Baltimore, for sure. Um, you also saw kind of in, in a more like middle, they call it a middle market, um, Dickeyville neighborhood had the highest prices with 385000 And at the lower end of the market, the top selling um, home was in Tawanda Grantley, and they sold a price for $187,000, okay? All right, so I saw someone ask about a specific neighborhood. So we're actually gonna get into 
what are some of the neighborhoods that uh, were popping off? Um, and so this information, we actually go through monthly with NextGen. So that's our mentorship program. That's our fam. If you're in NextGen, hashtag NextGen Takeover. Let's get it. Um, but we do that every single, we do this every month with them. So I don't usually share this outside of them. Uh, actually, a lot of this data is not shared broadly outside of, we're sent it directly, but got approval to share it with NextGen. Um, all right. So what are some of the neighborhoods? So I think somebody just asked about Poppleton. I'll see if I can find some information on that neighborhood specifically. So there are 267 neighborhoods in Baltimore, which is why we don't talk about zip code. So everyone that's um, posting or asking questions on Instagram and on, on YouTube asking about zip codes, the reason why I'm ignoring you is one, because yes, I am, can be a little bit, you know, um, but also because in Baltimore, zip codes are very big. Zip codes are very big. There are 267, I believe, neighborhoods in Baltimore. Sometimes I get my numbers, get a little dyslexic every once in a while. Um, they are, there are not that many zip codes. And so Baltimore being very block to block, when you talk about zip codes, you're, you're painting a broad brush on tons of neighborhoods. Some neighborhoods cross over multiple zip codes. A lot of times you cross the street and don't even realize you entered into a, a whole nother neighborhood with its own characteristics. And so when we talk about Baltimore, because we are here, we do work here every day. This is what we do. We talk neighborhoods. And then when we're getting specific in the neighborhoods, I'm going to ask you what hundred block you're talking about. OK, that's how it works here, because you can have homes that are selling for thirty thousand dollars, three blocks away from a, a block that's selling homes for $400,000, okay? So we're not trying to get you jacked up. And that's why we don't, we don't, to do, um, we don't do zip codes. All right. So uh, I see, I think Khalil's on here. He's like, next year, take over. Yep, I know, babe. I see you. Um, all right. So um, the top 10 neighborhoods um, in, let's go into the neighborhoods that y'all going to want to talk about. Y'all don't want to know the, um, the highest ones. So I'll go through the top 10 in, we go from, so Baltimore breaks down neighborhoods by um, really from A to I. Um, so B to C neighborhoods, those are your, and really they say B, but it's kind of like A, B, C. Um, they just wrap it all up in one. So that's your Cantons, Hamden, Patterson Park, Riverside, Fells Point, Highland Town, Brewers Hill, the downtown Baltimore area, South Baltimore, and Butchers Hill. Those are the top 10 neighborhoods. See, someone just asked about Highland Town. Yes. So Highland Town is the one, two, three, four, five, six, number six neighborhood in December for houses um, houses sold. Number six um, is, um, is Highland Town. Okay. The top 10 neighborhoods in D to E areas, which how they define that, I always side eye that kind of stuff, but how they define that, um, you know, what can you do? Um, uh, Frankfurt, uh, Glenham, Belhar, Walterson, North Hartford Road, Hamilton Hill, Lauraville, Windsor Hills, Lock Raven, Bayview, Violetville, Edna Gardeners, I'm sorry, Edna Gardens, Lakeside, Westfield, Greektown, Reservoir Hill, and New Northwood. Top 10 neighborhoods in D to E areas. Okay. Uh, let's see. When is someone redevelop, going to redevelop the Old Town Mall area? Do you think that's a good redevelopment area? Actually, Khalifa, that is already in the works. Um, so Councilman Stokes is a really big part of that. He's actually pulled us into a couple conversations about the Old Town Mall area specifically. But that redevelopment is in the works um, already. So, yes, soon come. Um, uh, yeah. So let me see what I'm trying to look at all these things on, um, on both sides. Um, uh, so yeah, so those are the, the D to E neighborhoods. So when you talk about, and someone said, what is the top 10 areas that purchase inexpensive re rentals? I'm going to give you the answer that I would give to someone who is in next gen to ask that question. Okay. How much you purchase the property for is not its 
value, its worth, right? Sometimes people are like, I want something cheap. Well, just like if you get a cheap car, sometimes you're not going to be able to get from point A to point B, <laughs> okay? So don't, if you're going to really, and not just buy a house in Baltimore, but find success in Baltimore, hit your goals, build cash flow, build wealth, right? Be able to survive more than just closing on the property because a lot of people come to Baltimore and fail. And sometimes it's because they're like, let me buy something for $5,000. Let me get something cheap. Let me buy you know, something in a cheap neighborhood, in a cheap area, um, and throw a tenant in there. That will get you jacked, <laughs> okay? That will get you jacked and quick. These, Those are the folks that end up in my DMs like, can you please help me? I'm sorry. I should have already joined Next Gen. Because <laughs> had you joined, I would have said, no, ma'am. In some cases, sometimes you find great deals and great deals are, are amazing. But what you have to make sure um, that you're doing and that if you're talking to someone who's saying buy in Baltimore, that they are telling you the truth about that process. And the truth of the matter is, if you're buying a house for $5,000, best believe your rents, your rehab budget is probably going to be in the six figure, in the six figure mark, right? That's the truth of the matter. The truth of the matter is if your plan is to get a cheap and expensive house and throw someone in that has section eight, if you look to your left and you look to your right and you look out the front window and you see a vacant building, the truth is you will not get approved to have a section eight tenant. That's the truth. And so the, the inexpensive, and I'm not picking on you at all, but this is a really important conversation. The truth is you have to know and understand. Um, you have to know and understand. You said I'm capping? No, no, no. You, you might not understand the grade list. Just because you have a D to E for yourself um, and how you define it doesn't necessarily mean that's how it's defined in this data report on specific housing market information. Um, so, um, okay. All right. I'm going a, I'm to a let it. Okay. I just want to make sure we could. <laughs> um, so, um, so, yeah. So, you have to make sure that you're balancing everything together. Okay. Can't believe the turnkey for 30K is only carpet and paint. Exactly. Exactly. How people dis define turnkey can be very different. That might mean you not, might not need to open up the walls and throw um, H back in them, which sometimes you might have to do that too because you find out they didn't do it right. Um, I know I'm trying to breathe. I'm going to simmer down. I'll simmer down. Um, but yeah, so you just want to be really, really um, careful. <laughs> I'm not even from Baltimore. Khalil's born and raised in Baltimore. His mom's from Baltimore. We actually bought a bunch of houses on a, on a block that she um, grew up on. Um, but I've been here long enough. Okay. I'm from Pennsylvania. Uh, We're not too far outside of Philly. So every once in a while, you know, but it's all love. Um, but yeah, so just be careful, right? Don't get wrapped up in the $5,000 houses of, of Baltimore and then get yourself jacked because what that $5,000 house turns into, she stay ready. <laughs> for those of you on YouTube, Instagram always tearing me up in the comments. But for those of you who, um, who, um, are, who've been on our YouTube, we have a whole video on why the $5,000 house, those cheap houses, things really get people jacked up. You end up buying a house for $5,000, but then you have all this stuff to deal with, um, that you don't, that you're not able to, um, to take care of. So just be very careful with that. I'm gonna get off my soapbox. Um, but let me go back. Let me go back for the D to E neighborhood. Um, someone's like talking about the, the D to E neighborhood. Um, so the average, yeah. So in this D to E, again, this is how it's defined here specifically, right? Those prices, those average prices were Dickieville, 385,000, Woodbury, 330,000, Reservoir Hill, 318,000. Um, so yeah, we come with charts, baby, okay? We come with charts. All right, group I to J, group I to J in this, in this um, spreadsheet. <clears throat> All right, so the top uh, 10 neighborhoods in this area, Carlton Bridge, Sandtown, Winchester, which Sandtown has been a conversation for quite some time, Shipley Hill, 
Elwood Park Monument, Coldstream Homestead Montebello, Rosemont, New Southwest Montclair, Oliver, Broadway East, Park Circle, 4x4, and Madison East End. So these areas are, those prices are ranging from 187000 down to uh, eighty four for like the highest prices in those different um, different neighborhoods. All right. Um, yes, Philly market is definitely Philly's getting high. We're seeing a lot of people come from Philly and want to learn how to invest in Baltimore, how to find success here because they're kind of on the back end and missing that wave in um, in Philly. And so we're like, cool, come, just make sure you know what you're doing, right? Cool, come. Spend the time to learn and understand our neighborhoods. Cool, come, but we want you to be successful. So understand how to process, go through the rehab process here in this market where the inspections are a little bit different, where, you know, the uh, the rehabs on pro properties that have been vacant for 30 years, um, you know, can be a little bit different. So you really want to make sure that you're, that you're good. Um, all right. So. Um, where can you find the list in next gen? Sorry, boo. <laughs> um, so, uh, this group F, G, and H in this list. So this is your Washington Village, Pigtown, Brooklyn, Bel Air, Edison, McKeldery Park, Baltimore Highlands, Edmondson Village, Morrell Park, Allendale, and Walbrook. So these neighborhoods, I will tell you, are known to be more, um, are known to be more uh, rental heavy. Um, and so these, oh, I'm sorry, did I get these mixed up? Yes, I sure did. No, so I'm sorry. The Carlton Ridge, um, the Sandtown, Shipley Hill, Elwood, Coldstream, Rosemont, Mount Clare, Oliver, Broadway East, Park Circle, 4x4, Madison, East End. These are mostly uh, rentals, not the uh, not the Washington Village, Big Town. Now, Washington Village, Village Pig Town, that area is one where for the last 50, 11 years are like, you know, it's coming in pig town. It's coming, right? It's going to change. They're going to do a lot of development there. It's going to be great, right? And it was never like, never quite mm, like it. Ugh, it just never all the way. Um, and so nowadays it is, right? Nowadays um, it is absolutely starting to really see that, that transition. There's some commercial developments you guys know that we are um, big on making sure that people understand when you have those anchor commercial investments, the neighborhoods around them tend to grow um, and tend to be to be impacted. Um, and so Pigtown, it's exciting to see Pigtown starting to turn a corner a little bit, just a little bit. Um, I didn't mention Madison Park because Madison Park wasn't on my list for this one. Let me see. Madison East End, um, I mentioned that, let me see. Y'all trying to get me into my bag. So these, the neighborhoods that I've recommended, I mean, the, the neighborhoods that I went through were top 10 in those sections. Um, those were top 10. That's why um, I didn't mention every single neighborhood. And there's 267. I can't go through all of them. Only 246 actually had sales. Um, let me make sure I'm getting caught up in the chat because I see y'all chitting chatting in here. Don't go past 1100 block of Pigtown. As soon as you get to 1200 Washington Boulevard. So yeah, and- and here's the thing. So if y'all are like, oh, I want to come to Baltimore and all this other kind of, you know what we need? We need some people with some really dope corner stores that we can like really change the narrative in a positive way. So if y'all are looking to open up businesses in Baltimore, let's chat because um, really, if you know, if you know, you know, um, and that is that um, there's some corner stores right there at the intersection that drive some foolishness. Um, Yep, there's some really dope culinary schools. There's some, um, even some culinary uh, food incubators in Baltimore that are really awesome. <laughs> Dominica said, yep. Um, was Ol Oliver was in the top 10. Yes, Oliver was in the top 10 for that, um, that section. Yep. Um, all right, let's see what else we got in here. I have like 57 pages of data in front of me right now. <clears throat> How many rehabs did you guys do last year? Uh, Khalil, are you in the chat somewhere? How many rehabs did we do last year? So we have, I know um, when we were doing our stats, um, we got our hands on about $2.2 .2 million of um, grant uh, or um, 
uh, like state type funding, federal funding, city funding, um, re rebates, um, tax incentives, all that kind of stuff. Um, but the number of rehabs specifically, uh, I can't remember the, oh, Phil said 21. Whoop. Close in the in the YouTube chat. He said twenty one. Um, okay. Yes, check us out, Charm City Buyers YouTube. Absolutely. Um, don't come here and just they're taking a loss on your company books. Those days are over. Period. Come on, Instagram. Period. Those days are over. We will get you up out of here, and not just us personally. Although we might talk a big game, um, the city's not having it. Because there's so much progress and so much positivity, um, so much growth that they are pushing folks out. And how do they do that? How do you know you're in an area where they're not they're not playing with you? You know that because you're going to start to get some stuff in the mail where they say um, that you are in violation of one thing or another. Right. And so they'll send you something. I remember one time actually in Pigtown, um, one time we had a, a property. Um, and they sent us something in the mail that said that our grass was too high. And we was like, we don't even have grass at this property. And so when they start exactly those sweets, when they start to send out a lot of those notices and um, really pushing folks um, to, to get work done, you know, you're in an area that they're focused on making sure people are getting things done. And so they do that through fines. They're going to do that through um, through really pushing you, um, even to starting to take your property back if you're just sitting there, right? Um, yeah, no grass at all. We had a concrete slab in the back. We was like, y'all, you're playing with us now. Come on. And they were like, yeah, no, sometimes we just, <laughs> sometimes we just send it out. Um, and so, yeah, this is not the time to come in and try to buy a property and sit on it. You need to come here and know what you're doing, which is why we do what we do with next gen, right? We want to make sure that people understand how to not just grab a property. You understand how to get the property done. You know how to how and where to find the contractors, what the construction is going to take you. How do you manage through that process? Where do you find the tenants? Where do you get the money? Where do you, you know what I'm saying? Where, where should you focus on doing a flip? Where should you focus on doing a rental? Because we don't have time for people to come in and jack it up. We need you to come in, get it done, and focus on moving things forward. Take Town is in South Baltimore, absolutely. Um, uh, from single family to, what's the best pro process of converting single family to multifamily? Um, so yes, you absolutely need to know the zoning, but you should also know that Baltimore is not big on doing those conversions at all. Um, because they're really big on building home ownership, a lot of times they, um, they don't like the converting to multi, um, and there's a lot of, of hoops you have to jump through as well. Um, uh, what's the average price for some of these properties? It's going to be a, um, it's going to vary on your neighborhood, the average price. So the prices of properties that we just went through went from $700,000 to 85. Um, and those are, and 85 was the highest that sold in that specific market. Um, hey, next gen, next gen takeover. Um, tips for getting next door vacants raised fast. Um, being part of a, of a group where you can say, Hey, I'm buying this house. Who else wants to buy the houses next door? Um, that's, that tends to be, uh, uh, pretty, ah, uh, um, pretty helpful. So I'm sorry, four to buy five by fancy. You hit a, you hit a core, any neighborhoods with a name change. Yes. Yes. They're trying to make Sobo happen for South Baltimore. So we do have the name change thing happen. That's how you know what's going on. They're trying to make it Sobo. And I refuse, I refuse. I actually reached out to the people who were trying to make that happen. Like, can we not? Can we just skip that part of gentrification or not? Nah? Um, yes, there's a lot of area that convert townhouses and single family into multi. Um, in Baltimore, mm, not much, actually. Um, awesome. Uh, Barclay, Barclay is, um, there's a lot going on in Bar Barclay. You hear Barclay a lot more. Um, I think they're trying to make that more of a homeowner neighborhood. Um, so no, so in what's happening in Bolton Hill and Druid Hill is that a lot of those properties are already zoned, um, or have in the past been already zoned as, as multifamily. And so that switch is not a big deal. 
Um, and it's in an area, again, specifically zoned. So the individual property has that. And those areas have the zoning to be able to switch. Um, so that's different, especially if there's not already, you're building it already from scratch damn near because it's a vacant, you know, it's a damn near tear down house. Um, so those areas like the Bolton Hills, the Reservoir Hills, the Druid Hills, those areas are um, are usually have that switch because those properties have a lot of transition in their zoning histories in the individual properties anyway. Yep, exactly. The Barclay, yeah. The Barclay, their community association. And this is something really big too. When you guys are starting to learn about neighborhoods, um, there is a, uh, a Live Baltimore Charlie tour um, this weekend. And part of that, they talk about um, neighborhoods on their Live Baltimore, livebaltimore.com. You guys will see us on there as sponsors um, and partners with them. But they have a lot of information on individual neighborhoods. When you see that, um, you can also find out like about their community associations, small community associations, uh, CDCs, community development corporations. Those are really great to see in individual neighborhoods because there's a lot of organization and they they tend to drive the growth of those neighborhoods as well. Um, I'm ready to move, but I'm really nervous. I'm ready to do this. Get it. Let's go. You have to like, sometimes you just got to decide to go. Like you have to just decide to go. You have to make that decision because if you stay in double Dutch, back and forth forever, you're never going to make a change. And if you're waiting for the perfect time, the time is never perfect. The time is never perfect. Um, I'm not sure if it's, um, you can't click a link in the in the chat, but I'm not sure if it's sold out or not. Um, but if you go to their website, I think it's still open um, or you can DM us. We can probably get you in on the back end. Um, I've been getting those hurry up and do something notices. First notice, second notice, third and final warnings. Got to pay those fines tomorrow. Um, so here's the thing what you do. If you're getting those notices, you're getting those, um, those, um, warnings, call the inspector. Don't just, um, ignore them because that's when you end up paying money for no reason. So don't ignore them. Um, reach out to the inspector, let them know what you're doing. Um, do something, right? Don't buy the property without a plan. If you have permits pulled, they won't send you those notices. Sometimes you'll get them anyway. We had some in the next gen, get those notices. And I'm like, just reach out and tell them you have your permits. And they did. And so um, and so you want to, to just make sure you're communicating. And then that can keep you from getting those, uh, the actual fines. Um, are there a lot of multifamilies available? Hey, Joel, um, it, in the different neighborhoods and areas where there are multis, yes. Um, as long as the more work you're willing to do, the more supply there will be for you to, to buy a multi. Um, there's tons of, of properties out there that need renovation. Um, and then the, the amount of multifamilies that are like turnkey are less, right? So the more work you're willing to do, the more options. Um, is Westport finalized for the maglev or is that still up in the air? Um, so that is still in discussion. Um, there's actually an article about that that came out a week or two ago um, about uh, about that train. Um, with or without that train, there's still a billion dollar investment into Penn Station. Um, so even if the maglev does not come through, um, which right now it's still kind of in the in the um, in the stages of getting approved. Um, Penn Station will, regardless, will be changing, uh, will be getting upgraded, which is going to help with those commuters with, who we're seeing moving into Baltimore who work in D.C. but live in Baltimore, work in, in Philly or work in New York, but live in Baltimore. Um, so Penn Station will be a development regardless. I've been there. I've been there through New York, D.C., and I refuse to miss on, out on Baltimore. That's what I'm trying to tell you. That's like that's the energy that we need. And so don't. Don't miss out on, on Baltimore and don't come in like, oh, I did da 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 in this other place and come to Baltimore and try to figure out why you bless your face <laughs> on the concrete on North Avenue. OK, it's because you have to you got to respect the game. And the game is that there's a lot of opportunity in Baltimore, but a lot of people fail because they don't understand how to navigate this system, this city. And that's why we spend all the time to, to share, um, whether on YouTube and Instagram or being more hands-on through, through NextGen. Um, 
The train takes like 45 minutes, Baltimore, D.C. If I track, yep. And sometimes you can get that 30 minute train. Exactly. Exactly. That D.C. to Baltimore is a game changer. Um, and we got, I mean, if Baltimore was open and all of the, like the growth that's happening, like when Baltimore opens up, people are going to see what's gone on over the last several months, right? All these new people in Baltimore. We have amazing restaurants. We have new clubs that have opened up, um, like right before COVID hit and all that kind of stuff. There's a whole new vibe. It's just that we're all in the house. And so when the outside goes like and opens up, it's going to be lit. <laughs> Um, what are your thoughts on the area around Johns Hopkins Hospital? My thoughts is I happen to have a lot to do with what's going on over there. Um, what are your what are the benefits of owning in opportunity zones? So we haven't opened up the class that we've done on opportunity zones in a real long time because we're so focused on next gen. Um, but opportunity zones, um, that is the basically it's a tax incentive for people with money. Let's let's call it what it is, right? And so the opportunity zone program is for those who have capital gains, <laughs> those who have capital gains, um, for them to be able to defer or completely not need to pay their capital gains tax by investing in what's called an opportunity zone fund, and then investing those funds into a designated opportunity zone area. Now, everyone always wants to talk about opportunity zones. Most people don't qualify to take advantage of the, of the program as it is written. However, comma, if you understand the Opportunity Zone program and you can start to think about how um, to take advantage of those people with those capital gains, the hedge funds or different, you know, um, Opportunity Zone fund um, uh, managers, where they're going to be putting their money, you can take advantage of what they're doing. And so you might not get the direct tax incentives as it is written if you do not have capital gains taxes to invest. Um, but you can ride the wave, right? And so I think for most people, it's about riding the wave. So in Baltimore, there are 46 opportunity zones, um, neighborhoods or areas in Baltimore. And so there's tons of areas to take advantage of um, the money that could be spent in those neighborhoods through qualified opportunity zone funds. It's a really complicated answer because most people don't truly understand um, the opportunity zone program. Baltimore got a huge shout out today on a panel webinar that included a mayor. Dope. That's awesome. Um, we actually just wrapped up. Chloe was on the mayor's housing uh, and develop um, development, um, housing and development like team that he had to provide um, like advice and um, some priorities for him to focus on in his first like 90, 90 to 100 days and for in his four years, like what he should be focused on, focused on in housing, which was really exciting to be part of those conversations, to be, have that seat at the table to make recommendations. Um, that's what it is, not advice, but recommendations um, as part of, you know, this panel of folks that the mayor put together with, you know, all these other developers in the city. And so it was great to have that seat at the table and to be able to come back to next gen and tell them, all right, well, this is what we're thinking. What do you guys think? Um, recession bubble. Buy now or wait longer. Always buy now. You will never time the market. Um, and uh, the truth is, um, we don't know what that's going to look like. We don't know what that's going to look like. Um, are the schools improving too? What's really great about the growth in the market and all these buyers, that means a larger tax basis, Right. And so the more owners we have in Baltimore, the more people we have to pay taxes to help fund the schools, which is amazing. And that's super important for Baltimore to, um, to have that basis. And so um, I think we'll continue to see the schools improve. Um, but you also have to understand, although there are challenges in the Baltimore City public school system, let's be clear, like there's no ifs, ands, or buts around that. There are tons of options in education in Baltimore. So whether that's charter schools, independent schools, um, there's even a lot of hubs for, um, for homeschooling and things of that nature as well. Um, so there's a lot of options in Baltimore that I think people really fail to talk about. Um, but beyond that, some of these numbers and the growth in the, in the market here is going to be great for, um, for the city to improve schools because they'll have the money to do so. And I know for a fact the mayor is going to be, um, although the Baltimore City, um, 
they're really looking at like changing the way the board structured so that it's like an elected board and all that kind of stuff. But I know that um, our elected officials right now um, are really, really invested in seeing the schools win. We actually just had someone DM us today to, to speak um, at one of the, the Baltimore City Public Schools for um, Black History Month. That's super dope. Um, is the Burr strategy good in Baltimore City? It can be good anywhere. Really what it's about is making sure that you understand the market. And, and so that's the big thing with those who are looking to burr, right? You're looking to buy, renovate, um, rent, buy, rehab, rent, refinance, and repeat, right? You're looking to buy a property, force appreciation through renovation, put a tenant in it, and refi out. Um, cool. The challenge is that you have to understand this market well enough to make sure that your rehab budget is on point um, and that you understand what goes into doing rehab. And a lot of our um, our properties here, especially ones that need a lot of renovation. And you also need to understand the market as far as how much these properties are going to be worth when you're done. Right. When you have a city that is block to block, you can get jacked and get jacked quickly. And so that's the key to a successful burr. So we've had people in next gen literally leverage burr to go from one property to 21 in like 18 months. OK, um, we've had a few people get to double digit um, uh, portfolios in a year. Um, but really, it's about one. I don't play with my analysis. And so I'm big on calling people out and making sure that their numbers are good. Um, but two, understanding how to um, really understand the market so that you're setting yourself up for success on the front end, uh, on the front end. Um, let's see. If you're eligible for the for the tax break, if you do not move into the property to live, um, are you talking about opportunity zones? Are you talking about what tax break are you talking about? There's tons of actual there's actually tons of different ways to get tax incentives in Baltimore. Um, uh, so Maglev said their tickets were $50. Maglev was really high. They, they just, I wish I, I still had it. I shared it with next gen, but they just had a, uh, a report on the Maglev like two weeks ago and it was definitely high. They were not fitting to have just anybody on that train. Um, do you do consultations before someone joins next gen? Um, what we do is you can apply to NextGen. So if you go to gocharmcitybuyers.com slash NextGen, there is a link to do an application. Those who qualify in the application will then be able to book a call to actually join. Um, and that call is with myself or someone on our team. Uh, talk to the mayor about these high property taxes. So the property taxes, let's talk about why the property taxes are quote unquote high. They're quote unquote high because our tax basis is small, still got bills to pay, right? And so if there are not enough people in the city to pay um, for the schools and all these other kind of things, then somebody got to pay it. And so the, the tax rate, so the tax rate in Baltimore is 2.26%. Um, so the tax rate being 2.26%, sometimes we'll say that it is high. Cool. Now, what you could do, however, comma, is take advantage of these tax incentives. So there is the homestead tax credit. There is the CHAP tax credit. There is um, actually a ton of different things um, that you can take advantage of just like, just take advantage of. There's a lot of different tax incentives. Um, so definitely do your research to make sure you're taking advantage of whatever is out there, number one. And number two, make sure that your um, your tax assessment, so what the city is using to base how much you're paying taxes, right? So your assessed value, how much the, the city or the state looks at the value of your home, because that's what you're paying taxes on. Make sure that your assessed value is not way above the actual value of your house, um, because that's another way to make sure that you're not overpaying taxes. Um, uh, homeownership is increasing, so they need to lower the tax rate. Home rate is 49%. It's time. Um, 
Uh, Quill said there's tons of conversations, a lot of conversations around property taxes. So when he was talking, when he was talking to that group, they were talking about property taxes. I hope as more development happens, they lower it, attract more people and stop people from leaving over high taxes. So let's be clear about that too. Um, a lot of people who are buying and moving into the city, like some of those areas where people are moving into neighborhoods, um, a good number of them are, uh, you know, those houses that are like flipped and stuff, they're using historic tax credits. So there is like a 10 year tax abatement on a lot of those houses. So they're not feeling it as as badly as some of the folks who live in areas that unfortunately um, aren't seeing as many folks use those tax incentives, which is another thing that we're trying to, to shift. Um, are there commercial properties available? Absolutely. Uh, if you already own a home, are there ways around purchasing an investment property without paying 20%? Uh, there are. Um, you don't have to necessarily work with, um, you don't necessarily, well, there's a lot of different ways to get access to funding. Um, and so usually when people are talking about paying 20%, it's because they're talking about working with banks and using conventional loans. There's a lot of other ways to get access to funding. Um, they keep getting developers tiffs. That's why. I mean, I'll take a tiff. So <laughs> I'll take it if they're going to give it. Um, let's see. Who would know these are tax incentives? My, my accountant? Probably not. Probably not. So there are the there's the homestead tax credit. Um, there's actually some tax credits that I learned about recently um, on um, one of the sessions that we have for next gen. Um, every month we talk about these Baltimore metrics and numbers, and we also talk about the incentives in Baltimore. And so um, in those sessions, we we dive deep into some of the things that I didn't even know existed. Um, but typically. If you're involved in like your community association or you can hopefully reach out to your city councilman um, on different things that are out there. I, I don't I don't think that, you know, one of the challenges in Baltimore um, is that there's just the left hand is not always talking to the right. And I just um, there's a lot of opportunities. And so one of the things that Chloe and I do when we're focusing on an area or doing some flips and things like that is is try to educate um, the community on different um, different opportunities, um, especially like when it comes to tax incentives. If we're doing flips and we're going to raise the property values in that neighborhood, that's going to raise that assessed value that we were talking about before on how much you're paying your property taxes on. And so we want to make sure that there are incentives to keep their taxes lower so that their um, their costs to live and, and stay in the house don't doesn't go up. Um, and so when we're able to, to educate folks and, and make sure they're locking in their assessed value before, you know, we add value in the house, that means that we're keeping their expenses low, but giving them, helping them to build wealth through the value of their property increasing. Um, but it's all about education. Um, I did not qualify for the homestead tax credit because my property was not my main residence. Yeah, so that makes sense. So if you're investing in Baltimore, you're trying to get tax incentives, you have to see, and this is again, right? Understanding Baltimore, <laughs> right? And understanding how to navigate the system, right? So those are next gen. Somebody just said, join next gen, educate, research, relate, join next gen. Because we talk about all the time, how do you get in on the front end? How do you get on the front end? And so there are incentives that you would have needed to, to dive into and take advantage of before you started to do too much with the property as an investor to get those tax incentives. A lot of those other incentives are going to be for homeowners, but there are ones out there for investors. You just have to know what they are, how to navigate the process, um, and make sure that you, you're positioning yourself to qualify because those incentives also lock in your taxes um, down for, for 10 years. Um, yep, Homestead is, is absolutely your primary residence. How can Charm City help a small business like Sharif to redevelop my business on? Yo, we love Sharif. <laughs> right? Um, DM us. <laughs> uh, we love Sharif. I every once in a while, I'm like, yo, I just need something from Sharif real quick. Um, so please DM us. That is funny. Um, uh, join late. Did you already share zips to have on our radar? Um, I did share that we don't do zip codes. 
because zip codes are way too big in Baltimore, but we do neighborhoods. Um, so we'll share this. You can go back and listen to some of the, the neighborhoods that we shared. So we went through the top 10, um, the top 10 neighborhoods based on different like uh, demographics. They break it down kind of weird, uh, but we went through some of the, the top 10 neighborhoods in different um, kind of property value brackets. Yeah, we'll definitely meet for lunch. Let me get, let me get some. I'll order something while we're there. Um, what's the minimum amount of money you think you need to invest in Baltimore? Um, so it, so that's going to depend on what it is that you're trying to do and appreciate. And um, side note, also comma because we're talking about Sharif's. Because I need y'all to go to Sharif's page, Team Sharif, T E A M S H A R E E F on Instagram. Um, their food is hidden. We always get salmon platters. <laughs> Anytime we're on that side of town, or like now y'all got the multiple places too. So it don't matter what side of town that we're on. Um, so definitely, um, definitely check out and support Sharif. Um, uh, sorry. So the minimum amount you need to invest. So it depends on what it is that you're looking to do, right? So if you are looking to buy a property that you're going to, uh, maybe it's a multifamily that you're going to rent out some units and, and live in one, that's going to be different than someone who is trying to, um, than someone who is trying to buy a property in like an area like Reservoir Hill or financing, right? How you're getting access to the funding to be able to do these deals. And so like, it's, it's going to break down a lot of different ways. Are you trying to flip? Are you trying to rent it out? Like, all of those questions are really going to help provide clarity on how much you're going to need to invest. That's the truth. That The God's honest truth is that it depends. What neighborhoods are you focusing on? What types of property? How are you financing it? All of those things are going to help define how much you need to invest. And I truly believe that how you define even those pieces comes back to what are your goals? What are your goals? What are you looking to do and accomplish? What is your vision? And that will help you define what neighborhoods. That's going to help you get a better understanding of price points. That's going to help you better understand, okay, are we renting? Are we flipping? You know, what's going to make the most sense here based on your goals, right? Then we're going to talk about, okay, what, what lending, um, what financial um, resources do you use to make those types of things happen? What incentives are out there that you should look into, right? So a lot of that helps define how much cash you, you need to invest. So we have absolutely bought properties with um, 100% all cash. And we've bought properties where we have literally walked away from the closing table with a check. But the, the difference between a lot of that is, is a lot, right? There's a lot that goes into being able to figure out those things. And so part of next gen, we're talking about things like, um, we're talking about things like, you know, the grants and incentives. How do you keep your taxes low? What are the different lending options that you should use? What are different ways to use OPM? And so the way next gen is structured, because I saw a lot of people asking this question <clears throat> and what's what's part of next gen. What's dope about next gen is that we we're doing this every day, <laughs> right? And so there's a curriculum that walks through that blueprint and that foundation. But then through the week and months, you have all of these different touch points to guide you through the specifics on execution, right? Nextion is not just about learning. It's about actually getting out there and buying property in Baltimore. So we can get to a level of specifics that you can't typically get in other spaces because this is why we eat it, <laughs> okay? And so as you go through the curriculum and get that foundation, when it comes to, okay, well, well, okay, now I, now I have an understanding. I, I know the process. I got the blueprint down. Now, how do I apply it? Well, now you have a session Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, depending on the week, to be able to get those specific answers, uh, questions answered, to guide you along the way of execution for yourself and hitting your own goals, right? And finding your own success. And so that means talking about incentives. That means talking about developments that are happening, commercial and otherwise. That means talking about city priorities and city funding, state funding and priorities. That means talking about different lending resources. 
That means bringing lenders into NextGen to share how to get money from them, right? That means bringing in realtors. That means bringing in all of these resources that are on the ground that you not only hear from, but you can work with as you build your team. So that's why people find success in NextGen because we get into it and not just for like a week or two, but for a year. And so you have that support through learning, through finding a property, through getting the money, through um, finding your contractor, doing the construction, you know, finding your tenants, managing your tenants, going through that process and then doing it again because most people buy in less than six months. Shout out to Jamal who just closed on his first property um, on Monday and he joined NextGen in November. Right. That's how it works. Um, uh, do you guys buy in Baltimore? Bruh. Um, I recently bought my first investment. I was surprised at the amount of renovated properties in Baltimore. Yeah, there's a ton of renovated properties in Baltimore. Absolutely. Um, uh, I think I answered that question. Uh, are there financing lending options that don't take into account student loans? Yes, there are. There are a lot. Um, but I will specifically mention one um, for people who are looking to buy properties to live in. Um, there is the Maryland Mortgage Program that will actually, if your loans are $30,000 or less, it'll actually pay off your student loans for you to buy properties. So there are some, some lending options in Maryland that are unique um, when it comes to student loans. And then outside of that, if you're investing Right. There's different lenders that will look at your your debt to income different ways. The hard money is another one that's not going to care. Yep. Um, I got a row house for sale. Three bed TLC. OK, cool, cool, cool. Uh, real sickly. Um, just answered that. Do you bring in wholesalers? We actually have. Um, yes, we actually have a bonus session twice a month. Um, talking about not only how can you wholesale, but how can you find deals yourself um, that are off market? So we do that twice a month as part of NextGen and we share deals. <laughs> and we share deals that are sent to us or come to, or, um, or that we come across as opportunities for NextGen to purchase. So we share, um, we share deals in NextGen, yep. Um, do you have agreements with title companies? Not specific agreements, but we do have our favorites. Um, so we do, we are, you know, we have ones that we've built relationships with. Um, so we're big on, um, we're big on sharing, um, resources, right? Why, why should you start from scratch and building your team if we already have one? Why, why try to figure it out the hard way if, you know, we will have an idea of, I know what title company I'm using if I'm doing a wholesale deal. I know what title company I'm using if I'm selling a flip. I know what title company I'm using if I'm doing something like super creative, like maybe um, subject to or something like that. Those are all different title companies. Um, we have insurance brokers and lenders that were like, OK, I'm using this one if I have a rental, this one if it's vacant, this one if I'm doing a flip, this one if it's multifamily. And so really going through and making sure that you, um, you know, understand like, that, right? You shouldn't have to start from scratch building a team. And so that's why Baltimore, why NextGen is Baltimore specific because we here and we're doing this, right? And so we can get into, into the nitty gritty. Um, uh, <coughs> best areas for multis. Um, so I tend, when I think about multifamilies in Baltimore, I tend to think about um, the West side um, just because Baltimore, be it right or be it wrong, like you're either like an east side or a west side type of person. I don't know what that is, even though we do a lot of investing in the east. When I think of multis, I definitely think of the west. Um, and so those areas, which um, y'all better get your pencils together because I'm not going to go through more than once. Um, those areas are going to be your Reservoir Hills, your Bolton Hills, um, Forest Park, Ashburton, Park Heights, um, Gwen Oak. Um, so those are a few. Those are a few. So West Side. <laughs> um, yeah. So okay. Uh, let me see. Make sure I'm not missing anything. I'm looking to buy a property that will serve as primary residence as well as uh, space uh, for a home based business. Any pros or cons that come to mind for housing home based business to be mindful of? 
Um, my first thought was just your insurance. Um, so you're just going to make sure need to make sure that your um, your insurance is straight because you do need to disclose that you plan to have a business in your home. <laughs> Say, oh, you share and share tonight. I've been on here for a while. I don't have my filters on. Hey, next gen takeover. What up? Um, I like Reservoir Hill. I like it, too. I like it, too. I like Reservoir Hill. Reservoir Hill. We looked at buying a Reservoir Hill probably like seven years ago. Duh, should have did it <laughs> for a personal resident. Um, but yeah, like Reservoir Hill, prices have skyrocketed over there over the years. But it's a beautiful area. And they're doing a lot of work over there, which is going to be super nice. Uh, do you allow people to shadow you through through a flip? And next gen, they get all that. Um, how does this program help when you have PropStream and a lender? Um, if you're in PropStream... <laughs> And have a lender and you're not finding success in everything that you're not getting from them. You get from us, right? Um, I'm in next gen, so so far, so good. <laughs> Thanks, Joelle. You're newer too, so you're 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 getting into the nitty-gritty. You're probably still in the foundation stage. You're still in the learning foundation stage, which is dope. Um, where are the brownstones located? Um, in Baltimore, we call them row homes, and they are everywhere. Reservoir is wild now, absolutely. Um, <laughs> any suggestions for homes near Hopkins? So homes near Hopkins, um, you are, so am I serious about what? What did I say? Um, homes near Hopkins are, um, you have a lot of diversity around Hopkins. Why? Because Hopkins bought a bunch of vacants and sat on them forever. And now things are starting to, to shift quite a bit. And then on top of that, you have some, um, uh, uh quite a bit of development around there. Um, so um, the first house Hopkins we we bought um, is worth like five six times what we paid for it at this point. Um, so so yeah so any anywhere um, oh you said you'll be joining this program you should you should join I mean the and this is like and this is the difference like it's not and I want you guys in next gen especially those who have been in next gen for a while next gen is not a course it's not a class. Um, it is like coaching, mentorship, it's getting access to resources, guidance, tools, um, team, all that kind of stuff. Um, no, next gen, well, so no, next gen is coaching and mentorship. And why is it that, right? Because we get this question about investment groups all the time. Why isn't next gen a um a, a like collective, put your money together, whatever? It's because for us, our goal is two things: to build wealth. Everyone in next gen, I need you to do ha next hashtag next gen take over in the chat. I see a few of you guys starting it already. Um, it's to build wealth, right? And so when we think about the wealth gap, we understand that um, you know real estate becomes a big part in building wealth, and so we're looking to build wealth through real estate and close that wealth gap. And number two, we're looking to build Baltimore, right? If we are just kind of taking everyone's money, right, and buying property, we're then limited. All right, all this next gen takeover, what up? Um, we then become limited by what our capacity is, right? Number one. And number two, we are also... Um, just kind of in and out, like we're sharing pieces, right? You get one pizza, the pizza's good, but now you got like a quarter of a quarter of a front of a of a piece, right? What we're really focused on in next gen, at least like the the original next gen, the first year, is you learning how you find success in real estate in Baltimore, right? How do you find success in real estate in Baltimore? How do you build your own wealth? leveraging real estate in Baltimore. It's called Next Gen for a reason. We want to make sure that our daughter, who is seven, is able to grow up in a world where people who look like her have similar experiences. And so we need to make sure that people are building that generational wealth for themselves and their family first. That's what we believe, right? Then because we're all doing that, now we have exponential growth, right? We done I don't even know the number. I must said, you know, double, but that's false. There's a lot of y'all. <laughs> and so now, you know, we're able to go out and we have 
all these hundreds of people buying real estate in Baltimore the right way, right? Buying it and actually doing something with it, buying it, putting tenants in it, buying it and being thoughtful, balancing the community development with, you know, making the dollars make sense and still thinking about adding value in the communities in which we're investing. So we have hundreds of people doing that, right? We're building wealth and we're building Baltimore. So that's why we don't just kind of take everybody's money. Then we make money, y'all make some money and, and we buy a couple of houses in Baltimore. It's bigger than that. The vision is bigger. So the goal for next gen is that next gen is buying and developing 2,400 homes in the next three to five years. 2,400 homes in the next three to five years, right? Which is amazing. And so, um, and so we need to make sure that people know how to do it on their own, right? So what, um, and then there's another level where we do some other stuff, but we keep that on the low, on the low, on the low. Okay. Um, uh, so yeah, um, but that's why, okay, I went, I got distracted by all the excitement that I had in my head. Um, and so that's why the first year it's important that everyone's building on their own. Now, once you build on your own, whole other ball game. Let's talk. Let's get it. Let's go. Cause we've able, we've set that foundation for building wealth. Okay. Uh, Red Hill's expensive. Would you should suggest Harlem Park or Upton? Yes. Love Harlem Park and Upton. Um, we actually did a social distant next gen walking tour through both of those neighborhoods a couple, a uh, couple weeks ago. Um, Yes, so we do get 2400 because we got 30k. So the so the reason why we did 2400 is because so yes, 30k if you think about like the broader I, there's a debate around the actual number of vacants in Baltimore, but the number you hear most often is 16,000 and so 2400 is 15% of that. So that's 100. Um and we will get all 24. Period. Um and so yeah, so in um a couple months ago we did a walking tour with Next Gen um, through Upton and Harlem Park, led by the community, led by folks of and from the community. Um, shout out to uh, Fight Blight Be More, who uh, really put that together. Um, but yeah, I love those areas, but there's a lot of, of um, work to be done. So you have to make sure that your goals um, match what the, the neighborhoods can absorb right now. But yeah. Um. Uh, prices are certainly rising along Druid Hill and McCullough. Yep, absolutely. We just had, we have a couple people that, that um, we have a few people who um, invest still in Druid Hill and McCullough. Absolutely. Um, how about ground rent? Um, ground rent to, how about ground rent to pay in full? Um, uh, let me see. Um, I don't understand your question 100%. How about ground rent to pay in full? Maybe re-ask that in another way. Um, Upton has a community that is all about home ownership and building their neighborhood. I was looking at buying there, but it didn't work out. Yeah, they are. They um they have a really strong community association. They do. Thanks, Brown Investments. Appreciate you. That was a great welcome tour. It was so amazing. It was so dope. It was so dope. Um, so yeah, there's a ton of neighborhoods just like that. Um, and we have a lot of people. Oh, yeah, maybe asking about redeeming. Thank you. Thanks. I'll answer that question. <laughs> Sorry, Brittany. Um, so about ground rent. So Brittany said um, maybe it's about redeeming. So if you so what is ground rent? So ground rent is basically um, in Baltimore, super old school. Um, sometimes when you buy the house, you might not actually own like the land underneath. And so you pay you essentially are leasing that land um, and you have the house over top. And so. Um, you pay, you pay that lease every year or twice a year or whatever it is. You can redeem it. Um, and so by redeeming the rent, there's an equation um, that you have to pay, but you can basically pay it off. Um, and so if you pay off that ground rent, now you have what's called a fee simple house. Um, there's a few different ways to go about the process of redeeming the ground rent. The easiest is, is if you know who the ground rent holder is, if you know who that person is, then you can just um, you can just um, reach out to them and say you want to to redeem. Um, so cool, reach out. Let them know you want to redeem. If you don't know who the ground rent holder is, there's a there's a more um, in depth process to be able to get that done. 
Um, but yeah, the ground rent process, as long as you're working with a lender who understands Baltimore, shouldn't be a big deal, but redeeming it isn't hard to do as long as you know who the ground rent holder is. Um, side note, I probably should have mentioned this before. Um, for those of you who are watching live, we happen to have a next gen informational session tomorrow. Um, and so um, DM if you want to be part of that conversation. Um, I'm from New York. What's the best way to learn uh, the Baltimore community? So if you're out, if you're not in next gen, if you're not part of our mentorship and coaching program, which we have tons of people in New York who are, um, you want to bring yourself down here when you can and drive around. Um, and or um, there's a lot of really great resources on livebaltimore.com, L-A-V-E-B-A-L. I'm not going to spell Baltimore. Livebaltimore.com. So that you can, um, so that you can learn some more about some of the neighborhoods. Uh, pay off ground rent versus yearly. The the advantage of paying off your ground rent and redeeming, which is what that process is called, redeeming your ground rent is um, not needing to deal with it anymore. And then now, if you were going to sell that property, um, it tends to be a little bit easier to sell because uh, some lenders do not like ground rent and then they have to redeem it and it costs more and all that good stuff. So if you're able to redeem it proactively, that's always great. Um, I want to come down. I'm from CT. We used to live in Connecticut. We lived in Connecticut for a hot second. <clears throat> Thank y'all for spelling it for me. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, but yeah, you can, uh, you can DM us, uh, for those who are like super, um, Super into learning more about next gen for the informational session or complete the application so that you can um, those who qualify to book a call um, to be able to chat with someone and get started. We have um, we have so much going on with next gen. We actually I've almost spilled the beans. There's some stuff we have to tell those who are in next gen first before I can share with some things that were changed up in February, with additional sessions and opportunities, um, and to you know some all kinds of stuff. Um, and so we'll share more about that. I'll get out of my own way and not spill the beans too soon. What are your thoughts on Broadway East? So Broadway East, Oliver, even when you think about like EBDI, Johnson Square, all those areas are really, um, have a ton of opportunity, a ton of opportunity. Um, we do um, quite a bit. Um, you said y'all should allow me free. What you mean? What's free? <laughs> what are you talking about? You're just over here in the chat, just chatting. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, those areas have, have a ton of opportunity. Um, there's a lot going on in that in that just greater region of Baltimore right now, which is it's amazing to see. Their community association is dope. We do a lot um, with them um, and some of the other associations around there as well. Um, but yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan. <laughs> Uh, I'm in CT. Who wants to ride down? So you got you and the people on Instagram need to uh, <laughs> y'all come around together. Um, ground rent is that for some houses or all houses? It's only on some houses. Um, it used to be on all of them at one point, um, but uh, over the years it's gotten redeemed. So the reason, the way you find out if there's a ground rent on a house is on SDAT. There's a website called SDAT, S-D-A-T. Um, you can search an address and then on that page in like the upper right hand side, um, it'll say some stuff about ground rent. Um, what's the best way to acquire distressed multi-unit properties in Baltimore? To make an offer. Now, I'm, <laughs> I'm starting to get tired. <laughs> no, um, yes, thanks for putting SDAT in the chat. Yeah, I mean, the best way to, I mean, I think it's really about Honestly, no, it's not just about making an offer, right? It's really about um, uh, making sure that you know and understand what the valuation of the property um, is going to be. So you understand like that block to block nature of Baltimore, um, but also understand how to estimate renovations. Your numbers have to be right. We spend a lot of time on analyzing deals. Spend a lot of time on analyzing deals in, both, in, uh, in next gen. And so- you want to make sure that you know how to do that first and foremost, because you make your money on the buy. And so if you're not spending your time doing that on the front end, right, it's not just about acquiring distressed properties. It's about doing something with it. So really understanding how to uh, to navigate that full process. 
Uh, where can I find more information on Old Town Mall? You mentioned earlier. I'm positive there's um, there are articles about it online, um, whether on the Baltimore Sun or the Baltimore Business Journal or things like that, um, because I've been in several meetings about them. Uh, uh, joining Next Gen. Um, no, we don't buy. We're not buying property for you. Um, we're not putting money towards buying your house or anything like that. No. Um, Next Gen is 12 months of mentorship, coaching, access, resources, um, non-public information sometimes, um, all that, our team, all that good stuff. Uh, can you redeem ground rent after you've purchased the home? Absolutely. You definitely can. You definitely can. So um, you can do that either by, you can, when you get your bill, this is not a ground rent bill, but when you get your bill, um, you can actually, um, on there typically is information on redeeming, or you can reach out to the ground rent holder directly and, um, and redeem your ground rent. And they'll tell you how much it is to redeem. How do we find out about tax credits? Um, there's a lot of, um, are there walkthroughs for only next year members? Absolutely. Um, we do a lot for next gen only, like like sit on live and answer a ton of questions for an hour and a half. That's usually next gen only. <laughs> that is a great example. Um, but yeah, we do a lot. That's that's next gen only. Um, like community tours, like walkthroughs, like um, especially pre COVID. COVID slowed stuff down, but um, pre COVID we were doing stuff, um, big things quarterly, and then things in between. We would even just like order pizza, everybody comes to our office and let's run through numbers on a whiteboard pre-COVID. So, yeah. Um, so how do we find out about tax credits? Um, if you, I would start by, and I'm not being smart this time, but I would start by Googling Baltimore tax credits. Um, you could also, I think Live Baltimore might have some information on their website. I can't entirely remember. Um, <clears throat> what's a good return rate flip for a beginning beginner investor? Honestly, for your first investment, if you don't have a mentor, your goal should be to, to not lose money. If you don't have a mentor or a coach and you're figuring it out on your own the first time, your first goal should be to not lose money. You should run your run your numbers, you know, well. And of course, you know, typically folks are like, you should try to at least walk away with like 20, 20 to 25%. Um, but uh but the truth of the matter is for your very first deal for a brand new beginner who doesn't have a mentor, your goal should be to not lose money. <laughs> that's, just, that's just the real of it. How do you suggest doing analysis on asking prices or a good deal for a rental property on if asking prices are a good deal? Um, you can look and see what other prices at that similar um, at that similar uh, in that similar area, similar characteristics, all kind of stuff. How much did those sell for? Um, I took a huge L my first and second. See, that's what, exactly how much money do you have to have down and ready to buy a house in Baltimore area looking multi premium properties? In other words, would you need more than $40,000 at your disposal? Potentially, it depends on, um, it depends on where you're buying and how much work it needs. Yeah, so <laughs> all right, thank you for taking your time to do this. Absolutely. Um, so thanks for joining everyone. So those of you who um, are interested in Baltimore, let's get it. Those who are looking to work with us directly, let's do it. Um, next gen takeover, baby. Um, I don't remember the last time I did something like this. So this was, um, this was a lot of fun with y'all. We spent so much time. Uh, next gen is a mixture of live training and a self-paced curriculum. So next gen is a year, 12 months. If you take your time, and I mean your sweet old time, going through the curriculum, it'll take you 10 weeks. That means like the entire 12 months is all live. All live. Um, I pay for wholesaling with another trainer. It's a lot of reading materials. Nah, we don't do that. This is, there's tons of, and those who are in next gen, y'all can co-sign real quick before I shut this down because y'all know I'm about to shut it down. <laughs> um, um, there's a lot of live hands-on support for sure. And a lot of, of different ways to get it. And it's us, it's our team, it's uh, resources that we bring in. Um, it's our guest experts, the whole nine yards. Hey, Simone. 
All right, you guys, I am going to bed before I turn into a pumpkin, but I appreciate you guys for, for joining in with us. Um, for those of you who are interested in Next Gen, love it. Come join the family. Big up um, to, to Next Gen. Um, we have a lot of fun. This this right here, like a tip of the iceberg, like we do this multiple times, like all the time, really. <laughs> this is just what we do. Um, and we kind of just scratch the surface here. So, um, but yeah, so appreciate you guys joining. Somebody said, don't waste your money nowhere else. Please don't, because then you come to us and then you're all like scorned and stuff. And we got to, you know, <laughs> and you're like, oh, this is different. Um, but yeah, y'all do come to us like scoring exes sometimes. And we're like, well, we told you, you should join next gen. <laughs> all right, you guys, have a great night. See ya.